Well, I have to say, this is the kind of hunt that I really love. Well, welcome back to Finding America. It is really great to see you back here. Uh, this week, I got another incredible picture. And this time, it was from Randy, Nicole, and their daughter. And they live down in South Carolina. And they sent me an amazing picture of themselves wearing their favorite Finding America shirts and even sporting their Finding America drop cloth. And I just had to share this with you. Well, thank you so much for sending me that picture, guys. Uh, it is really great to see you enjoying your Finding America shirts and drop cloths. And honestly, I can't thank you enough for everything you've done to support this channel. And I just want to let you know I really sincerely appreciate it. Now, if you have a picture of yourself wearing your favorite Finding America apparel or even using your Finding America drop cloth, you can email it to me at my email address, findingamerica01 at gmail.com. So, send that to me and I will be more than happy to fit it into a future Finding America episode. Well, unfortunately, last weekend, Chris was sick with a bug, and I was on my own. I decided to go to a long-standing permission that I had at a huge Victorian mansion built in the late 1800s. Now, I have found some really amazing things there, and I have to say, this hunt was no exception. There was just such an amazing variety of great finds coming out of the ground. And I have to say, if you want to find a variety of finds, you have to dig a variety of signals. And this hunt, I think, was an excellent example of why I love digging it all. Well, I got a nice little 15 signal. Dug down and got a little four hole button, or underwear button. But it's pretty cool because it has something on the back side. It says Treadwell and Sloat, New York cleaned it up a little bit before I turned the camera on, but I want to look that up. Maybe I can date this, but uh, very cool. Well, I got a uh, six and a seven on the Equinox and uh, just running in part two, small coil, and uh, got the remains of a very old tube. Eh, big deal, right? But I also got the top with the cap still on it. And check out that cap. I haven't found this one yet. I think it's LF, some type of monogram. But very old, probably uh, early 1900s. So I just wanted to show that to you. I love these old caps. There are a lot of different ones on interesting companies. So Let's see if I can find the information on that one. But just a neat little find with over a century of age, and uh, I thought I'd share it with you. Well, I was able to find a little bit about Pevico toothpaste. Now, it was originally invented in Germany in 1893. And if you recall, on top of that cap on the tube, it had the letters LF. Well, that stood for Len and Fink Incorporated. And in 1903, they secured the rights to begin manufacturing it in the U.S. And they did so using some ingredients imported from Germany. Now, unfortunately, with the outbreak of World War I, that supply line for those ingredients needed to make that toothpaste was broken. And the product started to suffer in quality. That, along with a growing animosity towards anything German in the United States, eventually led to the product disappearing from the market in the 1920s. Well, still on the grounds of this old mansion, I uh, had to get through a heck of a briar patch to finally get to this clear area, this little wooded area in the corner of the property. I uh, got a signal. Uh, it's nothing too crazy, but looks like a 60s uh, table knife. Pretty cool sunflower pattern on both sides. So I just thought I'd show you that and I'll keep plugging along. I finally got a pretty decent clear area here to hunt. Let's see if I can find anything. I found all kinds of things here from barbers to seeded. So usually I can't get in these woods in the summer because it's so thick and it's full of copperheads. So 
taking advantage of this cold weather and see what we can get down here. Well, got a nice little target here. Right up against this tree, it's uh, at least 100, probably over 100 years old. But I got a nice 12 right there. And I'm telling you, it was only about an inch or two down. And check it out. I don't even know what it is yet, but it is a nickel. And with the history of this place, it might be old. So, we're going to find out here. Uh, it has that look. I swear, I think it's going to be a V. I don't know. Oh, it is a V. Check it out. A little wipe on the pants. There it is. V nickel. Ooh, only an inch down. Well, let me get this toothpick and uh, see how old it is. Well, there she is. And she's pretty darn nice. I'll tell you what. I just gave it a quick toothpick and it's a 1905. And I can actually see all of Liberty on her. So that is awesome. Great coin. Beautiful coin. I got another cool find here. Right up there, just around that tree, was where I got the V nickel. And I came around this tree, working my way down. It is so thick in here. I have to use my body just to part trees so I can get enough room to dig. But I got a 14 right here, pretty deep, about five inches. And check it out, I haven't even looked at it, but it's obvious I have a very old key. And I love these old keys. So I'm gonna pop the dirt off and see what we got together here. Looks like an old automotive key to me, but who knows? So let's see. Give it a little pants wipe here. Definitely has some detail. I'm gonna get it cleaned up and uh, give you a better look at it here. Well, it's a bit worn, but I can make out the word keel, K-E-I-L, and it seems to be inside of a bow tie, similar to the Chevrolet bow tie. Uh, I've never heard of this one. Uh, it seems to be blank on the other side, but I'm going to put that definitely in the 20s. It could be teens to 30s right there. Well, I'm pushing my way down from that tree here. Basically, I have to back up and use my body to push these saplings back so I have enough room to detect. And I was making my way down, got a 27-28. Had high hopes for a coin, but still a cool little find. It's a barrel to a toy gun. Well, I got something, and I actually have no idea what it is. Uh, thought it was just going to be a penny, a 23-24, bang, and signal. And believe it or not, it was sitting on top of this root, so it never never got covered up any further. But I'm telling you, I don't have a clue what this is. I thought it was a penny, then I'm like, maybe it's an Indian. I'm like, that's a little small. Obviously it has something on it, I just can't make it out out here. And the other side, it is bizarre. I, I don't know. I don't have to get it cleaned up. Well, I certainly tried, but I still don't know anything about that piece. It remains a mystery. If you have any ideas, I would love to hear them. And uh, just feel free to leave them down in the comments below for me. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, like Chris and I always, Chris and I always like to say, uh, it's big and round. Um, bringing up 22 to 26, I pulled a nail out and I'm like, well, that wasn't it. But check it out. I don't even have a clue what it is. Oh, it's like half dollar size. I don't know if it's a clad half or... No, it isn't. I wonder if I got a token. Oh my gosh, look at the size of it. Whew. That is awesome. Oh yeah, I can definitely see some stuff. Oh, that's so cool. I think it says 50 on it. Oh, that is so awesome. <laughs> oh man, I love tokens. Oh, this one's going to be interesting. I have got to get this one cleaned up, guys. Unfortunately, I can't. Man, let me see. Holy cow. That surprised the heck out of me when I saw that in the hole. I thought, is that a Kennedy? Oh my gosh. It's got big 50 on it. Oh, I don't know if it's one of those 50th anniversary GMs or... 
I don't know. I'm going to get it cleaned up and uh, I will be right back. Oh, what a great find. What an awesome, awesome token. <laughs> it is a 50 cent token, size of a half dollar. Hopefully you can make it out. It's got a big 5-0 with some three stars on the top and bottom. But check it out. How cool is this? Good for 50 cents in trade at BWD Corrells. And I do not know what that is. I'm going to have some fun trying to find that one. But check that thing out. That is just a massive token. Uh, I don't know what it's made of. It may just, I'm, I'm thinking copper. But what a great piece. So there you go. And guess where? I'm just away from that tree where I got that first V nickel and I'm just kind of working my way through this mess but man I'm getting some good signals <sighs> now that that one has definitely made my day let's see if we can do even better <laughs> that is so cool Got another interesting piece here. Uh, sort of in the nickel range. I dug it out and I'm like, well, I don't know. Then I noticed it had some writing on it. It's threaded right here. Like it might have been uh, a cap and this might have been the base to top to a tube, but it's very cool. It says the JR Watkins Company. And then it has like a three leaf or four leaf clover or something. Nope, it's got a, uh, yep, a little clover there. So, that is very interesting, and I am definitely going to enjoy trying to find more about this company and try to figure out what this was. Looks like the top to the tube, and boy, the weather's starting to roll in here. We're actually getting some sleet, but guess what? I'm not going anywhere. That's waterproof, and so am I. <laughs> and I'm finding stuff, so I am staying right here. Well, just got a nice solid 17, 18. I saw the edge of it sticking out of the side of the hole and pretty sure I got a pocket knife. I haven't even pulled it out yet. Ah, the blade was open. Now check it out. Very cool. Little bone handle. Very cool. Well, I'll definitely take that. I always love digging the pocket knives. Got a 15 dug down, and I think I got something really cool. Check it out. Now, I think it has a cross on it. You might be able to see it. So, it's some kind of a lid. Oh my gosh, what is that? Wow. Hang on, let me... Let me rub this off a little bit. Oh, it's got some writing on it too. Holy cow. I think it, oh, it's not a cross. Oh, hang on guys. I'm going to be right back. I, I got to, I got to brush this off. This looks really cool. Oh, I think I found something I have wanted to find for a long time. I think this is a dragnet badge. It says Sergeant Badge 714 and a skyscraper in the center. I've seen one of these found before. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I'll have to do a little research, but oh, I've always wanted to find this. I love old TV memorabilia and the stuff they would give kids. <sighs> that's awesome. <laughs> Jeez. Well, I loved finding that Dragnet badge, and here are a few things I learned about Dragnet that you might not know either. Now, Jack Webb, the actor who portrayed Sergeant Joe Friday, badge number 714, was actually born on Friday. And Jack Webb's favorite number was 7. And a lot of people have speculated, how did they get 714 on his badge number? And the first number stood for his favorite number, 7. The second number, 14, was arrived at by adding 7 plus 7. 
Well, that show was a huge hit back in the day, and the LAPD was so impressed with the show that they gave Jack Webb his own detective's badge with his number 714 on it. And they also named two buildings on their police academy after Jack Webb. And that famous badge, eventually it was placed in the cornerstone of one of the buildings where it remains today. Well, when Jack Webb died in 1982, the LAPD flew all of their flags at half-staff. And it was the very first time it had ever been done for a non-police officer. And so deep was their admiration for Jack Webb, they retired his 714 badge number. I'll tell you what, the signals are everywhere over here. And I got a real blast in mid, I don't know, in the mid-20s, very strong signal. Uh, it turned out to be a bottle cap. But check it out. It says White Horse Distillery, established 1740 something. Can't make it out yet. But how cool is that? And I hadn't heard of that one. And uh, it'd be fun to get home and see if I can find more information on it. But that is a very cool cap with the horse in the center. So there you go. One man's trash is usually my treasure. <laughs> Well, I was getting a really nice uh, high tone, 23 to 25. I dug down, it's probably five inches deep. And let me just tell you, you know, with Chris under the weather, last night I told him, I said, well, I'll dig something up for you, buddy. Uh, unfortunately, I dug one of his bucket listers. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, that's right, Chris. 1909 Weedy Penny, first year. Uh, he's been trying to find one of those for a while. Uh, I'm definitely glad to have it, but... Uh, I really wish Chris had been here and had dug it up for himself here, but I am sure he will dig one up in the near future. <laughs> well, the next thing was bouncing around 12, 13. Had to go pretty deep for it, about six, seven inches. And then I got a nickel. I was hoping for an earlier one, but uh, ended up getting a 42 Jepson. Now, this is a non-silver. And another reason I wanted to show this to you, if you're just starting out, you might have heard about the halo effect and you're like what the heck is a halo well when the coin's been in there a long time it reacts with the soil around it and you see this darker area right here that's a halo and that actually amplifies the target for the detector so when a coin's been buried a long time sometimes it's a little easier to find it when it has this halo built around it so i just thought i'd show that to you because that was a pretty textbook example of what a halo is. Well, I just got a really nice signal. Uh, it's ringing in like 21, 22, and I see it right here popped out of the hole. I think I might have a button. Let's see. Yeah, it's just missing the shank. Let's... Oh, cool. Yeah, it's going to be uh, uh, World War One, World War Two era. Great seal button. I like finding anything with an eagle on it. All right, I'll get that cleaned up and uh, let you see it right now. Well, I am still in this uh, briar thicket, running that small coil, have to. I can barely swing the coil more than eight inches either direction. Uh, got right up against this tree, got a 26, 27 and check it out. I don't even know what it is. <laughs> That's exactly how it landed out of the hole. Got a silver dime. Let's see. Yeah, oh, it's a rosy. Yeah, we'll take that. Nice piece of silver. Ha! And it just made it. It's a little baby. 1964. That was only about an inch deep. So, uh, it's always nice getting a little bit of silver out here in the middle of the woods. Very cool. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh, I'm getting some nice stuff now. I'll tell you, got a 26, 27 signal, really nice and tight, said four inches down. That's what it was. And uh, I saw the flash of silver as I was uh, scooping the dirt out and that's all I saw. And then I just went and grabbed the camera. So I gotta find this thing here. I think it was a dime. Let's see.
there it is. Whew. I'm starting to wonder if I really did see it. Okay, y'all ready? Boy, it seems kind of small. Oh, it's another rosy. <laughs> hey, I will take... Oh my gosh, can you believe it? It's another 64. <laughs> How crazy is that? Two 64s. Well, I have to say, I thoroughly enjoyed that hunt, and I was so happy with the finds I was able to make that day, and I really hope you enjoyed watching it as well. Now, as always, I have some incredible historical photos from our country's extraordinary past coming up in just a few seconds, so I hope you'll stick around for those. And remember, it's history that always makes that find a treasure. And I can't wait to see you back here next week on Finding America.